What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modak J, and we are locked in. This is episode three of Young Rock. Now, we know last week we had high school rock. He tried to get the girl, took her out to the, see his dad wrestle. It wasn't a big event, but Rocky Johnson, one thing we do is we sell the gimmick, we live the gimmick, and we put on the show no matter who's out there. But enough of that, because we worried about today. So, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel and you want to be a part of this, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Pause. Hit the like button. We got to get that up. It's 2021. But this week, we get to focus on young rock. You know, elementary rock. We get to see him as a child. But you know me, I'm not going to hold y'all up. I'm Moda J. This is Young Rock Episode 3. Let's jump right into it. We know Dwayne Johnson is running for president. So one of the questions they ask him, and what the whole world is wondering, with all this automation going on, what is the biggest problem that people have looking for. And The Rock says with automation and just how the whole work environment is changing, we're seeing how cars are going from gas to electric, everything is changing and you don't wanna get left behind. So what, what uh, Dwayne is trying to explain is, look, you gotta work hard, but that's what's gonna lead us into this whole episode about not getting left behind with the old, trying to get to the new. If you haven't done your research on Rocky Johnson, go do it because all this isn't going to make sense until you understand how significant he was in the wrestling world. But at the beginning of this episode, we see young Rock with his mom and dad and they're watching wrestling on TV. We see Vince McMahon and he's like, Dad, how are you here? But you're over there wrestling. And <laughs> Rocky Johnson says, hey, we syndicated now, man. We blowing up. So Rocky Johnson was hey, one of the hardest working wrestlers. And with all this going on, him being on TV, he starts to sell merchandise. He got Rocky hats. You seen last week, uh, Rock gave the girl one of the hats. So he got all merchandise. He got shirts and everything. Like, we're going to cut the sleeves off. Matter of fact, young Rock, we're going to go ahead and make you the president. We're going to make you the president of all the marketing. So now young Rock says, oh, you know, my dad's my hero. I'm going to help sell his gear. Rocky really, <laughs> Rocky or Johnson really work hard, you know what I'm saying? No more motels. We in the hotel. He's, he's even letting Dwayne sit on the carpet because you know the motels be dirty. But when you got that hotel money, you know what? Room service. Let's bring it in. We live in a different lifestyle because Rocky Johnson, like I said, do your research. One of the hardest working men ever. Now they're traveling around the world. They're doing everything. WWF is on the come up. Vincent Mann got that going on. And then Grandma Rock, they got their own little wrestling, you know what I'm saying? Their own little entity going on that was started by Peter Maivia, the Rock's grandfather. Now what she's saying is with the WWF getting this big, all that's doing is we got Rocky Johnson on here. We got the Sheik. We got Andre the, Gi uh, the Giant on our tour. So, hey, we, you know what I'm saying? We could be able to make some money off of this too. Now, the thing is, one of the wrestlers said his mom is sick. So, he's not going to be able to attend the event. But, hey, without him, we'll still be straight. We got Rocky Johnson. We got Andre the Giant. So, she has her own little wrestling organization. And she's trying to put on a big event. And as of right now, we're only missing one wrestler, but we're good because all the other wrestlers, they're going to be here and they're going to wrestle with us. Grandma Rock, she can't stress how important family is. Now, this wrestling community, they're, they're tight knit. So, they're all around each other. They're coming to barbecues, they're hanging out. We seen the first episode when we got introduced to everybody. They're playing cards because they're all on the road together. So, you're my family member, you're my brother, you're my brother, you know? So, what she's telling the daughter, Rock's mom, is hey, it's been a couple months since your dad passed. Uh, we need you to come over and take you know the things that you feel are important to remember your dad out of this box and then we're going to get rid of the rest but remember people family is the most important thing that you have when i tell you rocky johnson was the hardest working man at that time that he's up on the wall with sylvester stallone and he's in between them but he was working hard and you know what rocky johnson says is you know saying i'm i'm rocky johnson oh that's rocky number two but this shows you how far back he was wrestling Young Rock didn't know that that was a man. He thought that was a woman. Young Rock, as the president of marketing, he's taking his job serious. He tells the guy at the gym, listen, we need this kind of food when we get here. We need a line because there's going to be a lot of people here to get autographs. I need a table to set up all the merchandise that we have. Let's get it done. And the owner's looking at him like, are you serious? Then we look at Rocky Johnson. He says, hey, he's the president. Do what that kid says. 
Vince McMahon really has the WWF blowing up and he, hey, he's taking it to another level. Now he's starting to get more and more wrestlers. So he invited Andre the Giant out. They had drinks and they were talking and he presented Andre the Giant with one of the first action figures. And it even had a little button on the back that you move and his hands go up and down. Everybody's like, oh my goodness. Rocky Johnson, he's sitting back like, me and Vince are good. I know he, he, he's, he should be working on mine. Andre the Giant tells him, no, nah, it's just mine at this moment. That's all we're going to get. So Rocky's sitting back like, what, what is Vince doing? He's not, he's not moving forward with me. But if you know your history about the WWF before it turned to the WWE, Andre the Giant became one of the significant centerpieces and he passed the torch over to Hulk Hogan when Hulk Hogan picked him up and did the slam. So that's where the transfer of, you know, the power, the star power went over to Hulk Hogan and then it carried on. But this is the moment where Vince McMahon seen the power of what Andre the Giant could bring to it. Not saying that Rocky Johnson couldn't, but Andre the Giant was, you know, a bigger person. So it was more, oh man, look at this giant. Oh, wow. Mama Rock goes to the house. The uncles are over there, the two wild, crazy Samoans. They're over there and they're looking at old footage of her singing with her dad playing a ukulele. And she she does have a, a good voice. So she was a singer and she was pursuing that, but she felt like once her father passed, because he always pushed her, he always complimented her. He always supported her with her singing. She felt once he passed that she gave it up because it was more of something she did with her father. That was her bond that the father and daughter had. But once he passed, she kind of put the music down and she left it alone because it it's just something that is emotionally tied to her. So whenever she sings or plays an instrument, she starts to think about her father. You see people doing this when they're grieving. They try to try to stay away from stuff because it's going to keep them sad. But eventually you'll get over over that hump and you'll realize that those good memories are something that you should have. But she always thinks about, nah, maybe I should have kept singing. But, you know, if it, it was something I did with my father. Yes, I do know the characters' names, but it's just easier for me to say Grandma Rock, Mama Rock, you know what I'm saying? So Grandma Rock, she has the event going on, and we got the Iron Sheik in there, and she's trying to tell him, look, this is a family event, and we know the Iron Sheik. He's going to, hey, he's going to be him. She gives him a list of things he can and cannot say, and I'm telling you, every word that on there is beep, bleep. Man, I can't say anything. And Grandma Rock is, yeah, this is a family event. Now you see why. I don't want you saying any, any of these words on here, Mr. Sheik. Come on now. You remember when I told you one of the members said his mother was sick and he wasn't going to be able to attend the wrestling match? Well, that's because he signed with another company called Yao Promotions. King Kong Bundy versus Country Boy Leroy. So, they lost a member because he lied and said, oh, my mom is sick, so I won't be able to make it. But really, he signed a, you know, a promotion deal to go wrestle somewhere else because there's more money. And I mean, that's that's the business world. Oh, yeah, brother. They got Macho Man on here. I, I, I'll show you guys a picture of him in a minute. But Grandma Rock and everyone sitting down, they're like, look, we got this event coming up. King Kong Bundy, he backed out. And Rocky Johnson's like, hey. We're a family. You you can't do that. But the reason he backed out is because there's more of a lucrative and financial gain and benefit for him to go wrestle with Yao. Now, everyone else, they're sticking to this because this is their family. This is what they have going on and they have that loyalty. Now, going to get some more money somewhere else and then coming back. I won't say that's not saying you don't have loyalty. It's just doing what's best for you. And people have to understand that. When you're making business decisions, you need to do what's best for you. It's not going to hurt anyone else's pocket, but do what's best for you. Oh, yeah, brother. There we go, macho man, Randy Savage. But the whole the whole group, they're coming together. All right. If, we, if, if, if you say you're going to do something, that's what you have to do. That's your word. Like I just explained what was going on. It's, it's not that there isn't loyalty. It's just, hey, man, I got bills to pay. There's more money over here at Yow Promotions. And in the background, you see Andre the Giant back there with his action figure toy. And Rocky's looking at it. Man, Vince McMahon, what, what, what's going on here? I thought I was supposed to be your star wrestler. They're telling Rocky Johnson, hey, your wife, she's an amazing singer, man. She, she really loves it. You need to come and watch these tapes. 
because she can really sing. Well, they're not tapes, they're actually reels, but she can actually sing. And they're trying to encourage her, you used to love singing. Why don't you try to get on the show Star Search? And for her, I already explained how she felt about singing. It was her connection with her father. So she's saying, ah, uh, now, uh, oh, here's my son. Young Rock comes over and, hey, dad, I sold a t-shirt. He's like, okay, cool, who'd you sell it to? Guess who he sold it to? Grandma Rock. Of course she's gonna support. <laughs> Grandma Rocky and Rocky Johnson, they pull up on Junkyard Dog, like, uh, where you about to go? And he's, uh, my, my mom's sick, she got a hold of some bad yogurt. Turns out he has a glazed hen all wrapped up in gold that came from Yow Promotions. Junkyard Dog, he tries to explain to Rocky Johnson that, hey man, it's nothing personal. I got bills to pay. Yow is offering us a lot of money that I can't pass up. I still love you guys. And this is what I was saying earlier, where job security and being able to move forward. He's trying to tell them, hey, man, this is good for me. I still love y'all and I still work with y'all. It's just at this point in my life, I need that extra money. So now they lost King Kong Bundy and now they lost Junkyard Dog to y'all promotions. But hey, money talks. Y'all know that. One thing about Rocky Johnson, he's an entertainer. So he's going to work his tail off more than anybody. Junkyard Dog's trying to say, Hey man, you know, I'm about to upgrade myself from a, some chains that he always used to have, you know, the junkyard dog. I'm gonna get a briefcase full of bonds. And Rocky Johnson like, don't, don't do that. Get a briefcase, fill it with fake $100 bills. So when you hit somebody, it boom, explodes open. You got all kinds of fake money. So now it really looks like you, hey, you really making money. And Grandma Rock's like, hey, quit pitching ideas over there. But one thing about Rocky Johnson, he loves wrestling and he loves putting on the show. Grandma Rock ends up getting a call from a young Vince McMahon. Now they have a good connection because Rocky Johnson working with Bo. She's a promoter. WWF is on his way up and he's just calling her. But what he's telling her is, uh, yeah, you have an event. I have an event that same time, uh, but it, it's kind of too late for me to change it. Pretty much what he's doing is strong armor. Since he has a bigger platform, he's saying y'all might have to change y'all data because there's there's so many concerts and things going on at this venue and, you know, <laughs> TV company and stuff. It's going to be hard for me to change all that. So I'm going to need that night that you guys are supposed to be wrestling there. And I'm going to need to do my thing. So Grandma Rock's looking at it like, what in the world is going on? But this is change. TV's being involved. The market is getting bigger. You can't stay at the little mom and pops no more. Vince McMahon seen something and he started to dig into it dig into it he was bringing his wrestling to the national level mama rock is talking to to her mother and she's saying you know it's just so hard not not letting go of everything because this was her connection with her dad and even grandma rock is saying yeah i know it's tough but when you talk to him ask him for some advice and mama rock tells her See, dad always depended on you. He would ask you questions to see how things was going because he trusted you with everything. And that's why he left you the company. Now, both of them, of course, they're grieving. It's, it hasn't been that long, but they're both going through this together. And Grandma Rock is trying to convince her, hey, you should continue singing because that's what that's what was joyful in your life. And, and it's going to help you get through a lot of things. Young Rock didn't understand the business, but what he did know is, hey, <laughs> my dad is a star and we are moving on up. We're, we're going to fancy restaurants. And I always say this, and just like what Young Rock said, they got all kinds of food. You got to look at the food and pick it out and then say, oh, I want to eat that. And then they cook it for you. But it doesn't taste better than French fries. You're really wasting a lot of money going to these fancy, fancy restaurants. But, hey. Rocky Johnson, one thing, we're going to live it. We're going to live it up while we while we on top. That's a, exactly what we're going to do. Then, you know, on the promo where we're seeing Young Rock asking for a different kind of liquor to drink while they're out eating. This is the episode. The uh, the waiter comes over. Hey, would you guys like something to drink? Rocky Johnson said, give me your, your finest bottle of wine. Then Young Rock, uh, let me get a, a little bit of this. His mom and dad, no. Okay, what about this? No. Okay, I'll take a Shirley Temple with, you know, extra cherries. Young Rock, hey, I'm the president. I'm the president of the market. I need to have me a drink too. This is stressful, Dad. Come on. Mama Rock finally took things into her own hand. She sent in her audition to Star Search. So she ends up getting up on the stage and she's singing. She dedicates this song to her dad because, hey, 
I'm about to pursue what I love to do with my father. She gets on the stage and she says, ah, this is dedicated to my father. I've been coming here for years. And the song she sings is, I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Yeah, she doing a good job. Everybody in there rocking out. So Mama Rock, hey, pursuing her dream. It's signing day at the gym. Rocky Johnson got shirts up, hats, posters, autograph signing. Young Rock's over there setting it up. Let's go, people. In and out. In and out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it done. And guess who comes in? It's Yao. Now, he comes in with another glazed hen. He gives it to Rocky Johnson and says, hey, I didn't force these people to come over here. I'm just offering them more money. And I can also offer you some money. So this is what the whole episode was about moving forward and losing your job do you want to stay where you are or start to expand and go into the next thing now rocky johnson is starting to think about it if i don't go i'll end up getting left behind with what we have on the small time now yao isn't as big as vince mcmahon but he's a little bit bigger than what they are and that's what the whole episode is about are you willing to progress into the future and that's what The Rock is trying to convey to the people running for president. I know how it feels to potentially get left behind. But one thing, if I get elected as president in 2032, no one is going to get left behind. That is my word, Dwayne Johnson. And I approve of this message. <laughs> there you go. Episode three of Young Rock. Let me know what you think below. Do you think Rocky Johnson should go forward with Gal? Because you know you gotta move forward with hey well what's going on? You can't be stuck in your own thing. You gotta always be able to evolve. Let me know what y'all think below. Cause I definitely think he should. It's, hey, it's Rocky Johnson. You know what I'm saying? It's Rocky Johnson. But hey, I'm Mode IJ. Thanks for watching. If you like the content on the channel, please hit that subscribe and like button. Be here next week for episode four. Young Rock. I'm Mode IJ. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.